Hi there and welcome to Thursdays with Enev. I'm excited to cook you a fabulous Indian delight today on the show. So we're delving into book three and the recipe is the fabulous sweet and spicy lamb. It is delicious and it's also in cooking for one or two. So you can make it for six or you can serve it for two. So you have that option. So I'm excited to do this recipe for you today because it's an oldie but a goodie. But before we get into the ingredients, let's talk about last week's show, which was the raspberry uh, coconut slice, which we thoroughly enjoyed um, for afternoon tea, that's for sure. Now the winners of book three were Leah Johnston, Leanne King, and Catherine Dwyer. So they all get a Percy Sloan copy of book three. So they're really happy with that. So let's look at the ingredients we need for this recipe. Uh, so we start with 600 grams of very lean lamb leg steaks. You'll see that when I'm cutting them, they're just beautiful and lean and really quality lamb, which is really good. You're also going to need an apple and I'm using a red apple. You could use green if you wanted, but we do peel it. So we want a cup of apple, a cup of um, sliced onion. I've also got here a third a cup of slivered almonds slivered almonds. So I'm going to toast them in a second. You also got half a cup of sultanas. So you've got that sweet and spicy thing going on here, as well as the fabulous spices, which are the coriander, um, ground coriander, cardamom, cumin or cumin and turmeric. So they're great. We're also going to use some beef stock powder. I'm using the Marcel because I like that one because it's so much lower in sodium. We've got a tablespoon of tomato paste going in, as well as a tablespoon of corn flour going into a can of evaporated light milk. Now, because they've changed the sizing of the milk, it does say in the recipe 375 mils. So I've actually got the, um, the enough skim milk to make it 375 because it's only 340 in the new cans. Don't you love it when they do things like that? And I'm also going to put a little bit of coconut essence in and you can buy these in most IGA stores now. They're not, you can't really get it in uh, Coles and Woolies anymore, which is a shame. All right, so what I'm going to do first is I'm going to fire up my wok and while I'm chopping here, I'm actually going to toast the almonds. Now, it says in the recipe that you can um, put them under the grill, put some foil down under the grill, but I, you know, because I'm standing here, I thought, oh no, I'll just toast them in the pan. The thing is, either under the grill or in the pan, you do have to watch them so you don't burn them. But this is a, goes on top of the dish. So if you wanted to have a lower fat count, you could always do that and not have the almonds with them. But they do make it a bit fabulous. All right, so let's start. I'm going to do the onions first. Now we want to slice the onions. So I'm going to cut it in half and half again. And I want a cup. So there's my cup measure. Cup in slice. And we also need to dice some apple. And I just think you don't really kind of know the apple's there until you get a little bit of that sweet taste in your mouth. Same with the sultanas. Um, I love the whole, the sweet and salty. I was ahead of sweet and salty before it became fashionable. And I want a cup. There we go. That's a cup. So I'll just put that back in the bowl. And I'll then now do the apple. So we want to peel the apple. Have I got a peeler? Oh, here it is. So let's peel. We want a cup, as I said, so it's, um, it, because uh, apples vary in size so much, I thought it would be too hard if I just said like a medium apple or whatever, because what is a medium apple? Well, it's probably this size, I reckon. All right, so let's toss our almonds. I can smell them. Oh my gosh, don't you love almonds or any nuts roasting? All right, well, thank you for joining me today. This is a fantastic Indian dish and uh, you know Indian food can be incredibly high in fat so you really need to watch that and I'll talk a little bit about that as we go all right so let's get rid of the peel now we're going to cut them in quarters let me just 
move that around a little bit. Cut them in quarter. And then, of course, we need to take out, I'll use the little knife, take out the core. I can remember my nan used to make apple pies all the time back in the day and she'd always leave parts of the core in and you'd get that little hard bit and I used to hate it so much. So when I do this, I always make sure I get that out for sure. I don't like it. These are nearly done. So you can see they don't take long to do at all. I'll just give it another couple of minutes and let's dice. Don't make them too chunky. Just a small dice is good. And as I said, you could use green if you wanted. Look, I think we're good. Let's turn it off for the moment. And here we go. Wait a minute, I'll just turn it around so you can see what I'm doing. So there's the almonds. All nice and toasted. And remember, it was a third of a cup. There we go. I'll be using the wok in a minute, so I'll just put it to the side now. And, oh, we don't want to lose those fabulous bits of almond, so let's put that there. And please remind me <laughs> if I forget to do it. You know, I get carried away. So we'll put them in later. All right, we're back to the apple now. And as I said, we want a cup. And all the flavours just marry together beautifully in this recipe. And I've had a few people comment that they forgot about this recipe. They hadn't made it for a while, so it's made them think about it. Apple's done. All right, can we get them all in there? I think we can. Awesome. All right, so next is the meat. I might just turn this over because I can. And remember, you can get these on the website now, the fabulous watermelon chopping boards who doesn't want them in the kitchen and I might change um, knives as well so we want them cut into strips so I'm going to bring all the meat out here 600 grams and always you know the always go how do you do with the grain you know you want to go across the grain and you can actually make this if you don't want to do lamb because it, it is a little expensive but it's you're worth it <laughs> But if you wanted to, like the lamb, if you make the lamb, it's 8.4 grams of fat a serve, which is incredible, isn't it? And that's because I'm using such beautiful lean lamb. It's just, just to die for. But you could do it with rump, and the rump is 6.3. And you can also do it with the skinless chicken breast, and that's 6.1. So they're great. And look, I haven't written it down, but if you're a vegetarian, you could certainly do it with tofu and uh, just cut them into dice. And always use the firm tofu when you're frying things. All right, so cutting all these bits up. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually turn my might walk back on because I'm going to cook the meat first and this is a little trick that I do with my recipes and I think you should you should do it as well is that you cook the meat first in this type of dish and you then take it out we're going to take it out of the pan and pop it back in when we're we're pretty well done and that way what happens is you've, you've got really moist meat instead of it being all dry and yucky. So, cooking spray, always use the rice bran spray when you're making a recipe using the Neo Flam. I'm gonna just move this out of the way and wash my hands. There we go. Bringing over the wok, we need to put that, I might put that right here. And in goes the meat. Now I've heated it up. Oh, hear that sizzle. As a little bit at a time because we don't want to throw it all in because it's cold meat and it will then just stew. And don't forget you can always do chicken or rump. 
washing my hands again. Oh my gosh, how's everyone doing in lockdown? Sending you big love because seriously, we are in crazy times right now and I can imagine that for some of you, you might be struggling a bit. So, I don't know, it's just one of those things. I always think to myself, you know, the wonderful quote, this too shall pass. And I kind of feel that's what we've got to own right now, isn't it? Um, we had a friend recently um, who had planned her wedding like 18 months ago and it had to be cancelled. So everyone's got to do with what they've got to do. Anyway, they've booked it for next year and, and it'll be nice because then hopefully everyone can be there at the wedding because at that time it was only Queenslanders. Alrighty, so take care. Now, if you are struggling, you know you should reach out because there are places where you can reach and talk to people and, you know, Beyond Blue is a really good example of being able to have someone to help uh, listen to you, um, if, you need, if you need some help. Because, you know what, be brave and speak up if you do need it. All right, so my lamb is cooking away beautiful here and I have got everything ready. So while that's just finishing to cook, you know what, I'm going to show you another thing that I love to do because it just makes it easier is I get a little container like this, get my fabulous adjustable measuring spoons and I put all the spices, when there's a few, like here we've got four. So they're all a teaspoon of each. So I'm just gonna move that up there and go in. See, what I love about them is I can stick them in right directly into these spice pots. So a teaspoon, that's the cardamom. Let me just toss my meat, nearly done. Okay, coriander, now it's the seeds, it's ground, it's not the leaf. And these are very traditional Indian spices. And look, if you think, oh gee, four spices there. I use them in so many recipes, it's worth buying them, people, because you'll find you'll use them in lots of other recipes. Turmeric, oh, I'm making a bit of a mess here, and then cumin. Very, very Indian flavours, that's for sure. All right, so there's my spices ready. I'm going to now just put that there. I might even actually wipe my bench down. Let me just turn it off for a sec. We like a clean bench, don't we? <laughs> All right, so now let's put the meat in. Billy's just gone to the fridge very quietly. I don't know whether you heard him because we forgot the ginger and the garlic. <laughs> Good on you, Billy. He's amazing. All right, so now what we're going to do is I'm going to get another spoon and I'm going to do a teaspoon of ginger. Oh, let me spray. One moment, please. Okay. Teaspoon of ginger and a teaspoon of garlic. Now, I didn't say that in the beginning, so make sure you remember that if you're taking notes. Thanks so much for joining me today. It's just my highlight to the week when I connect with you on Thursdays. All right. So there's the ginger and the garlic. And, of course, you can always use fresh if you prefer. You know, I'm just a lazy cook and I like to just make it easy. So in goes... Ginger, garlic, a teaspoon. Now we're going to put in that onion that we chopped up ahead, remember? And the apple. And the sultanas. Oh gosh, I love sultanas. And in this, it just is so fabulous. If you haven't tried it, I'm sorry, you need to be making it tonight because your family are going to be super impressed with you. So we just cook them off for a couple of minutes. So really the chopping is basically slicing the meat up, onion and apple. Boom. How easy is that? All right, so then what we're going to do is we're going to now add in the spices. And this is why I love it. We've already done it ahead. And so you just pop it in. And you're just going to cook those spices for about a minute because we really want to get that fragrance into the sauce. Um, and so it's always good to cook off your spices 
just a little bit. Don't just put them in when it's, the sauce is there. It's always good to do what I'm doing now. That's perfect, my gosh. Now we're, the, all we have to do is put in the tomato paste, tablespoon. Wait a minute. Put that over there. Stock powder. And remember my spoons, uh, I'm doing two teaspoons of stock powder. So with the spoons, the tablespoon is, remember, 15 ml. All right, now you could, if you wanted, you could put your almonds in if you wanted now, but I like to sprinkle it on the top. And that way I know I'm getting my share. Now this is enough for six people, right? But, or in the cooking room too, if you know it's for two. Um, but let's now do our last thing before, I'll just turn that down a little bit. Let's do the evaporated milk. And they've got this ring thing on it now. It's just very interesting how they changed it. Remember it's 300, you'll see it here now, it's a 340 ml. I'm going to put my 35 ml of skim milk because I want the exact amount. And we're going to put half a teaspoon of coconut essence. So move it down to the half teaspoon. And in we go. Corn flour, we want a tablespoon. Burn it. Tablespoon of corn flour. Let's mix that up. Got a little whisk here. Now we're going to put this in and then we will add the, the lamb back. So you can see how it's just sitting there being fabulous and being very patient and waiting for its turn. Now the good news is if you like Indian food, I have you covered. Oh yes I do people. I've got about 12 specific Indian dishes. Let me read them off to you because I've written it up over here so I'd remember. You've got dal soup. Yes, dal. Who doesn't love a dal soup? I've got Indian beans with homemade chapati bread. Now you might see them make these chapati breads on MasterChef. It is so easy to do. I've done it for you so you can even just make the, the chapati bread. But it's got the Indian beans with that. I've also got Indian potato and beans. If you're sick of just carrot and spinach, I'm sorry, go to the Indian potato and beans as a side. It is delicious. Also, I've got cashmere rice, which would go beautifully with this as well. I've got the traditional butter chicken. Of course, I have to have butter chicken in there because it's so, so much lower in fat than the traditional one. Indian tikka. Now, that's a really favourite of my house as well. Indian curry, I've got mild sweet curry. Of course, we've got the sweet and savoury, no, sweet and spicy lamb as well as um, Easy Rangdang and um, also Rogan Josh and Tandoori Lamb Burgers. Yes, you're welcome for those who love Indian. And why do I love this so much? Because if you bought these in the Indian shop, I could feel the fat sucking on my thighs right now because they use a lot of ghee, which is a very you know, fatty butter. Um, I'm going to put the lamb back in now. And I'm putting all that juice in as well because who doesn't want that lovely lamb juice? Um, they also fry things with oil. They also add cream to everything, whereas I'm using the evaporated milk, which does just as good a job. And what else they do, which you're probably not going to be aware of, is they, in many of the dishes, they actually um, crush cashews and put that into the mix. So that's why it tastes so amazing. But seriously, if you're looking at heart health and weight loss, then just go to those recipes I just said if you have out of my cookbooks if you really want to do Indian because it is just way healthier. All right, so now we just got to I've put everything in. It looks amazing. Oh my gosh. I wish we had smell of vision and you could smell how delicious this smells. But we're going to serve it up in a second. But what we're doing next week is fabulous because it's Father's Day next Sunday. Yes, Billy's going to be spoiled. Anyway, I'm going to dedicate it a bit to the dads next week. So I'm going to do two stale meat sauces. 
So I think it'll be fantastic. For example, I'm going to do hot and saucy steak sauce. Oh, yes, you want that. That's out of book six. And I'm going to do then the steak with the creamy mustard sauce. They're both really very, they're very popular with men. And that's out of book four. And yes, I'm going to give two books away to three lucky winners next week because I can. And it's Father's Day. So join me next week because it's going to be fabulous. But you know what? If you would like to win, yes, you do. Who wants to be a winner? Um, all you've got to do is like, share, and then in the comments, hello, you know what to do. Hashtag simply with a Y, number two, good. Write that in, simply, the hashtag simply, good, write in the comment, and hopefully I'll pick you. You've got to be in it to win it, that's for sure. All right, so now I've got some rice in a bowl and I'm just going to serve it up because I want to show you how fabulous this looks. And we are going to remember the almonds, go in it. All right, so here's our wonderful, wonderful sauce with this lamb. And remember, it's enough for six people. So you've got dinner done. I'd probably like to have... Um, maybe uh, a bit of salad or, or veggies because I mean it is winter. Turn that off. Let me clean my little plate a little bit. I'm not doing a very good job. Okay, here we go. Let's put, let me move this out of the way. Let's put the almonds on the top. Here we go. This is the piece de resistance. There we go. We've got plenty there. It's enough for six. A boom. We're done for another fabulous week. That's right. So don't forget to join me next week. We're doing Father's Day special. And if you want any more tips or recipes, you know where to find me at simplytogood.com.au. So take care, everybody. Stay safe. Look after yourselves. And uh, I hope you make this this week because I think you'll put it in your favourites. Take care now and I'll see you next Thursday. Bye now.